everybody. Welcome to this week's How To Tuesday. I just asked some questions on Instagram Live and got some pretty good uh, responses. So I hope I can get more good questions. One question that I got on Instagram just a second ago was one that I probably should have thought of before because this is a question that I had for a long time. And that is how to chum for bonefish. When I first started guiding, I didn't do any chumming at all, none whatsoever. And everything I did was sight casting. And sight casting is fantastic. It's so much fun. And we live in a place in the Florida Keys where generally you have good sunshine and sight fishing is something that you can do really most of the time, I guess. But of course, it's fishing and it's the weather. And so you have clouds that blow in. You know, you have days where you have what's called a Key West whiteout, where you just get this these white clouds kind of coming over. It casts a glare on the water. It's incredibly hard to see anything. If the tide's high, you can forget about seeing bonefish. Um, if it's if it's uh, you know nice, you would be able to see them in that depth of water. But when you have the clouds overhead, you just you just can't see anything. Then you have other situations where it's raining. You have other situations where the wind's blowing really hard and it's cloudy and seeing something in the water is just not, not an option. So you have to come up with some other kind of way to fish if you want to fish, which most people do. And if you're a professional fishing guide, you get put in this position a lot of, wow, you know, this is really not an ideal day. And if it was maybe just up to me, probably wouldn't be going, but these people came from a long way away and they want to go fishing. So some of the different options that you can have are either fishing up against the mangroves for different species that might be there where you don't have to see the fish. You're fishing some sort of structure like the mangroves. You can also maybe chum for fish. You can chum for sharks. You can chum for bonefish. And chumming for bonefish is a very productive way to fish for them. But for a long time, I didn't know how to do it. I didn't know anything about it, and I would fish in these tournaments against guides that knew how to chum, and if it was allowed in the tournaments, they just killed everybody. And some of the biggest bonefish ever caught out of Alamrata have been caught chumming or doing some sort of a variation of chumming, which we'll talk about on this podcast right now. So in order to chum for bonefish, what you're going to do is you're going to, you you actually want to get to a a place where you're not going to see them. You really want the water to be just a little little deeper. You want uh, you want there to be current. So the number one thing that you're looking for when you're going to try to chum for bonefish is you want to go to a place that bonefish go. It's a good bonefish spot. And that can be found by looking at charts. They're published uh, charts that have fishing areas. That was an old book. Um, one of the classics of all time was uh, Stu Apps Fishing the Florida Keys in Flamingo. And in that book, he had little maps that had pictures of bonefish. And you know what? Pretty accurate. Pretty accurate on the bonefish, the tarpon, the barracudas, permit, all the different different things. And if you don't know the Florida Keys and you can get your hands on that old book, the spots that worked for Stu Apt a long time ago are going to work for you today. Um, and some of them are some of the best spots there are. But anyway, figure out how to find a bonefish one way or another. Uh, pretty much anywhere on the ocean side from Key West to Key Largo is a pretty good, good uh, start. Um, and then, of course, you know, look at the published maps and find a good bonefish spot. You want to go there when there is good tide. I personally prefer the outgoing tide a little bit more than I do the incoming tide for chumming for bonefish. But often when you are put in a situation to where you need to chum for bonefish, you don't really have the choice of of going there. I mean, for me personally, if I can see the fish in the water, that's the way I'm going to choose to fish. If I am out um, fishing with with someone and it gets really cloudy and windy, a front blows in or something like that, we haven't caught anything all day. Chumming is a little little trick you can have up your sleeve where maybe you could make something happen that might not happen otherwise. So it's either go back to the dock or maybe try chumming in a lot of cases. So in order to be ready to chum, what you need is your standard bonefish rod, seven foot rod, medium 
to medium heavy action, you know, uh, like um, anywhere from 10 to 15 pound uh, braided line, a little leader. And then if I'm typically going to use maybe a two aught plain shank offset J hook for my bone fishing, I might step it up to a three aught for the chumming situation. And I'll tell you exactly why here in just a second. You're also going to want some split shot because you want this bait to be presented right on the bottom. Then you're going to need several dozen shrimp. You know, if, if you leave the, if you think, you know, there's some weather coming in and you may chum later, you know, pick up six, eight dozen shrimp at the, at the marina if they have them before you go. That way you can use them for sight fishing um, if you want or um, chumming as well. And if you listen to the podcast, uh, How To Tuesday with the Lunker Dog, Jeff Maggio, you can learn how to keep these things alive for the next day if you don't use them all. Um, you're going to take the shrimp and you're going to just kind of break them up into little anywhere half inch pieces. And you're going to just start breaking those shrimp up. Some people will cut them. I just break them up in my hand and then just throw them out in front of the boat to where they are going to be in a small area and go right down to the bottom. And this is where you want to be a little careful. This is where some guides are really, really good at this. Some guides maybe not as good. Uh, certainly some recreational anglers um, may not be as good at this as, as others. And that is how much chum and how much, how, and the frequency of the chum. So if you just chop up every shrimp in your well and dump it out there right away, you're probably going to attract some bonefish, but you're also going to attract small snappers. You're going to attract sharks. You're going to attract every other thing that's out there. And the bonefish, even though we think it's the coolest fish out there, it's definitely not the most aggressive. A little four inch snapper is far more aggressive than a bonefish. So what you want to do is you want to just just put out there just enough, just enough, maybe a handful every now and then. Not not just no, don't just pile it up. And uh and then you're gonna take your rod with your three out hook and a couple of split shot and enough to make it stay on the bottom and put two or three pieces of this broken up shrimp on your hook and throw it out there right where you've been throwing the pieces of shrimp. And this should be just out of sight. So where I can look down, maybe maybe the clouds or the sun is not allowing you to see more than about 30 feet, then I'm going to throw it about 40 feet out there to where, you know, it's just just on the front edge of where the chum is on the down current side. And this where where you're chumming you should be uh, should be a good amount of current. So what the current is doing is the current is washing over these little pieces of shrimp, and it is washing the scent down to where the bonefish are currently. And uh, bonefish have an incredibly good nose. If they smell this, they're coming. And so you will chum a little bit. You'll take that rod and put it in the rod holder, what guides in the Florida Keys called Rodney. Rodney is the best fisherman on the boat because Rodney never, never sets the hook on something uh, accidentally. You just sit it there. You have your drag set to where if a bonefish grabs it or any other kind of fish, it is going to be able to pull line out and bend the rod over enough to set the hook on its, on its own. The bonefish sets the hook on itself. And uh, you don't necessarily need to do anything until you see that rod bend over and the drag is screaming out pick it up and now you've you're you've got the bonefish. Um it could be a bonnet shark, it could be a box fish, could be um a permit. Lots of we did a show one time with uh Jeff Malone where we went and chum bonefish in a very good spot for chumming bonefish and I think we caught three or four permit there while we were shooting a show. Never caught a bonefish. So that's one of the reasons why I like to step up the hook just a little bit is because you are, there's a chance that you're going to catch a permit. There's a chance that you're going to catch a really large bonefish. And there is a chance that uh, you're going to put a lot of 
shrimp on that hook. So you're going to impede the gap of the hook. So I like to step it up just a little bit more. So you, you found your spot. You've gotten there on an incoming or an outgoing tide when there's good current. You started chumming. You stick the rod. You got your rods rigged the right way. You put it in the rod holder and you wait. And I like to wait eh, 15 to 20 minutes if you've got good current. 15 to 20 minutes ought to tell you whether or not you're going to catch anything there. If, if within 15 and 20 minutes you maybe throw a handful of shrimp when you first get there, then break up another one about, you know, maybe five or 10 minutes later, and you keep doing this, just adding a little bit of fresh chum every now and then, um, and you have your rods out there, you're checking them every now and then to make sure that the shrimp are still on there, um, and you don't catch anything within 30 minutes, it's probably time to move. And usually when it happens, it happens fairly quickly. And so I will, and, and oftentimes it doesn't take a, a big move. Maybe where you are on that flat is not productive because the current is washing the scent someplace where the bonefish aren't, but a hundred yards to the left or to the right or a little further down the flat, uh, may make all the difference in the world. And you will find these spots that work exceptionally well uh, for chumming on certain tides. And you might also see that the very, very experienced guides are moving slightly as the tide is coming in or going out and putting them in the place where the bonefish are more likely to be so that you don't have to draw them very far off their path. That's going to be a, the best is that they're coming along this path anyway. And, oh, wow, doesn't that smell good? I'm just going to just take two steps over here, and, wow, I just got caught. Okay, that's a lot different than having to, to draw them 100 yards off of where they would like to be. So the best guides are going to know where they, where they like to be already, and they're going to get there, and they're going to chum and just kind of enhance the whole situation. Um, chumming is a... Very effective way. It does, it's not allowed in a lot of tournaments. Um, so, because it's not allowed in a lot of tournaments, people have come up with other ways to kind of get around that rule. And one of those is to chumming means that you're taking chum and you're throwing it into the water. Fishing means that it is actually attached to your line. So, people figured this out a long time ago. And they came up with what is known as the booger rig, where they will take these little pieces of shrimp and thread them onto the hook and up the line. And now you have 15 or 20 of these little pieces up the line and you're actually fishing. You know, that's not considered chumming. And so you have more scent out there, more likelihood that you're going to attract the bonefish to where your bait is. and a lot of really, really big bonefish have been caught using the booger rig, um, and it's a highly effective way to fish. So I hope that helps a little bit on the, on the uh, chumming for bonefish. I am no way, in no way, a chumming expert. Um, I much prefer sight fishing, but I got to say, I much prefer chumming to not fishing at all. And I much prefer chumming to returning to the dock empty-handed. And I have had some really good times uh, chumming. And a lot of times, you know, you might be out there and just kind of set yourself up for a little little 15, 20-minute chum while you eat a sandwich. And then you go right back to sight fishing. And, uh, and you might add a couple of bonefish to your, uh, to your day or maybe a permit or who knows, maybe it's a bonnet shark. You know, you can chum for bonnet sharks purposefully. You know what that's great for? That's great for kids. And, uh, and you know, oftentimes when you're going out there and you're just chumming for bonnet sharks with some kids, guess what happens? You catch, you, you catch a lot of bonefish or you find a really good bonefish spot that you can return to later and, uh, and catch some. So anyway, chumming for bonefish, it's a very effective tactic and it is a very valuable tactic very valuable. So that's how you do it. And, uh, and, uh, a lot of people are really, really good at it. 
just like anything else, if you practice and you work on it and you pay attention to the details, you can become incredibly good at it. And the Florida Keys has some guides that are probably the best in the world at chumming for bonefish. So there's a lot to learn. That's the very simple way that I can describe how to chum for bonefish. So I hope that helps. I'll see you out there.